Yeah, thank you for the introduction and also thank you for the invitation. Uh, it's my great pleasure to give my, the, to have the second chance to speak in this seminar. Um, yeah, so today uh, I will talk about um, the, my recent preprint uh, joined with uh, Barmeyer. Uh, yeah, uh, the, the paper is already in archive uh, with the same title. Um, so yeah, you can search it if you, uh, you would like uh, to know more details. Um, yeah, here is the outline of the of this talk. So uh, there are three parts, and uh, in the first part, I will uh, give a um, basic introduction to uh, extended cone of arc algebra uh, KMN, and then uh, I will realize this. Uh, algebra as a quiver with relations. And then we can, uh, with this help, uh, we can study uh, the deformation, the infinite deformation of the, uh, of KMN. Uh, okay, so yeah, um, let's start with the first part. So um, to, uh, there, are, there are several um, equivalent uh, definitions. Uh, of this extended cone of arc algebra. And in my talk, I will give uh, the, somehow the relatively uh, concrete uh, definition, namely, um, I define this KMA as a, a diagram algebra. So yeah, so let me uh, start with some uh, basic, uh, uh, start with some preparations uh, before uh, giving the definition of this uh, KMN. So, Yes, so I started with this uh, two integers, uh, positive integers m n. So this uh, should be appear in our algebra k m n, and I also fix m plus m points in some horizontal line uh, of the plane, like uh, just your horizontal line, and you fix this, and then you pick uh, m plus m points. You fix the m plus m points in the line, and then we can define. Um, uh, so-called weight of type uh, mn. So this is just a sequence of uh, uh, ups, the symbol up and the symbol, uh, uh, sorry, this symbol down and the symbol up. So placed at the uh, fixed m uh, plus m points, okay? And the number of down is m and the number of up uh, is n, okay? So, so then we denote the set of all weights uh, by this uh, lambda uh, m n. So then we, we know uh, the number of this set is just m plus n choose n, right? Uh, let me give you uh, some easy, simple example. So we look at this, uh, for instance, if m n equals uh, one, then we only have, a, so this set is like uh, only have a two, um, elements. So namely, we can put uh, order this by uh, up and down or, or down and up, right? And then we put this, if we fix the uh, uh, two points here, and then we could decorate this uh, in this way, or uh, yeah, we put this or this, right? And, and similarly, if you look at this uh, n equals one and m equals two, then we have this, uh, yeah, we have a three uh, uh, weights. Namely, for instance, here we put, uh, yeah, for the first one, uh, if we fix the three points here, then we decorate them from left to right as like up and down and down. Okay. So then you can count, right, uh, the, this number of the set. Okay. And then we can, uh, we need two more uh, definitions. Uh, so first, uh, we have this so called cup diagram. So this is uh, just a diagram consisting of uh, nested uh, uh, cups and the rays. So we can draw, uh, but going downwards, so we can go down, uh, which are attached to the uh, M plus M points and such that the rays or cups do not in intersect uh, with cups. So, so yeah, the best way to understand the definition is uh, uh, looking at examples, okay? So yeah, here. So this, for instance, here we have this cup. So, so this is for, for one one case, 
we just uh, draw, for instance, we can just draw lay going downwards. So it should be go to infinity in some sense. And then uh, we also have this cup, right? We can connect these two guys. So this means for one one case, there are only two uh, cup diagrams, right? And of course, we can also define a cap diagram by uh, looking at the middle image of a cup diagram. So namely, we just, uh, yeah, along this line. So for instance, the middle of this cup diagram uh, is this, uh, the two layers going uh, upwards, okay? And similarly, this, this cup then uh, to the middle, we get the cap uh, diagram. So we also get the two uh, cap diagrams here. And similarly for, we can look at the, uh, the example uh, two, two. So then we got, we will get uh, six, we will get six uh, cup diagrams. And also uh, by middle, we get also get six uh, cap diagrams. So the like, first one should be like, we just draw lay. And yeah, the second one we can, we can connect uh, the first the two by cup and keep the lace here. And we can draw, uh, yeah, connect the second and the third one by cup or connect the third one and the fourth one by cup. And all we can keep, uh, connect the first two and the last two by cup. And similarly, you can also, yeah, it can be nested, right? So you can also connect these two guys and these two guys. So this is all the cup diagrams of this type two, two. And uh, by middle, we get uh, six uh, caps, okay? And now, yeah, so this is uh, not uh, what we want at the end. So what we want actually is the so-called arc diagram. So this should be the uh, basis element in our algebra KMN, okay? So now uh, let's try to give it the definition. So an arc diagram of type uh, MN, so this should be dependent on this MN, is uh, an oriented uh, diagram. So the orientation should be given by this uh, up and down. So obtained by uh, gluing a cup diagram and a cap diagram along some weight uh, like lambda, uh, but should stay subject to the following two constraints. So the first one should be uh, this, because I said this oriented diagram, so, so the orientation uh, given by this uh, up and down, uh, should induce a well-defined orientation on each arc. And the second uh, constraint looks uh, quite technical, um, yeah, but it's necessary to add this in order to get uh, uh, this uh, KMN. So yeah, what's this? So this means if we look at, if they are in the, in the arc diagram, if we have a, a two rays, which either like both uh, going uh, upwards, uh, upwards then the orientation cannot be uh, this uh, down and up from left to right. So this is not allowed. Similarly, if we have like two rays in the arc diagram, uh, which go in uh, downwards, and then the orientation of these two guys uh, must not of the form like uh, down and up, okay? So this means uh, whenever uh, you, you, you find like uh, two rays uh, going downwards, then the orientation of these two guys from left to right uh, must be uh, this uh, up and down, okay? Yeah, so uh, let me uh, show you example to understand the definition. So let's look at uh, the one one case. So here, as I said, we have like um, uh, four, we have these four cups, cup diagram, and also the four, uh, sorry, yeah, here we have a four, right? Yeah. And we also have four uh, cap diagrams. And then we can, uh, we can just, uh, sorry, we have only have a two, sorry. <laughs> we, we have a two, but we can do the com combination and then we get these four uh, di arc diagrams uh, along this weight, right? So like here we have this cup and then we, 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 we glue with this uh, uh, cap. And then the orientation is okay, right? And here the orientation is also well defined. And also these four guys satisfy the condition, right? Like for instance, here we, we look at these two uh, rays uh, going upwards and then the orientation is uh, 
from left to right is uh, uh, up and down. Okay, so this is the uh, well-defined arc diagram. Uh, but here we, we have a, uh, these three guys which are not uh, uh, well-defined. Why? Because like if you look at this guy, uh, we look at this uh, up, upwards arrows here, and then the orientation is like a down and up. So this is not allowed. Okay, similar to here. We also get like down and up. And also here, if you look at the rays uh, going downwards, we get this up and down. So this is not allowed. So then this means uh, in this case, uh, in our algebra uh, K11, uh, so this, this algebra K11, then it's like a five dimensional, right? Because as I said, uh, later I will define uh, KMA as like a, has a, a K linear basis uh, given by this odd arc diagram of type uh, MN, okay? And then we can look at a further example, namely this uh, uh, two, two case. So, so because we have like uh, many cases, uh, actually get like 47 uh, admissible uh, arc diagrams. So yeah, but I, I will not join, uh, join uh, them here, uh, but I will give you some examples which are not arc diagrams. Like for, in, for instance, these three guys. So yeah, let me explain this again to try to, answer, to rem remember this definition. So here, like this one is not arc diagram. Why? Because like this not, the orientation is not correct, right? Because this does not induce a well-defined orientation here. Okay, so this is not arc diagram. And here, uh, yeah, this uh, uh, is also not arc diagram because it, it contracts with the second condition. Namely, if you look at this base here, which are not close to each other, but yeah, we just look at two rays going uh, up and then we find it's down and up, right? So it's not allowed. So, so this is not arc diagram. And similar here, we also look at, we can look at this rays and then we have this up, down and up. So it's not allowed, okay? So you exclude all this, all this uh, now arc diagram, and then you will get uh, 47 like, admissible arc diagrams, okay? And for uh, each diagram, we can define a degree. So namely, we define it as uh, by counting the number of clockwise uh, cups and clockwise caps. For instance, uh, if you look at the degree of this, so, they are like uh, they one uh, cap and the one cup, right? And the the so this is a clockwise, right? So this is a clockwise cap, and this is a clockwise cup. So this is a degree. So this is a degree two. And we can look at uh, this one. So this we have like a count clockwise uh, cap and. Count clockwise cup. So this is uh, uh, degree zero. Okay. And for instance, here we we only have a one cap, which is uh, clockwise. So then this is the degree one. And we look at here. So there is only one uh, clockwise uh, cup. So this is the degree one. Okay. And yeah. So then this means that oh only one, uh, there's a degree zero one and ah, uh, uh, okay. So if there's no clockwise cups and the caps, then, then we take this to be degree zero. Okay, so this is degree zero. So then we get like two degree zero element and two degree one element and one degree two element. So actually this degree will give us the grading of the algebra KMN, okay? So this means the grading should be compatible with the uh, uh, multiplication. Uh, which we will define later. Okay, uh, so let me give you uh, some observation before uh, the definition. Uh, so about, uh, I mean, the ob observation about the weights uh, and the diagrams. So we, 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 we observed for any weight lambda uh, of type MN, they, they exist a unique, uh, arc diagram of degree zero. So yeah, with this weight lambda. So we denote by this. So this means for, 
for any weight lambda, you can construct a unique arc diagram, which is degree zero. So yeah, let me, uh, yeah, let's go back this example. So like for instance here, for this uh, weight, there is only one degree zero diagram. And for this weight, we find this one degree diagram. So the idea uh, to construct this diagram is like you connect the closed uh, uh, down uh, up pairs from left to right. And then you do this uh, iteratively, like if you, this, what, these two guys already connected, then you uh, erase this and do this again. And, and here, there is no like uh, down uh, up uh, pair again. Okay, for instance, here you can also draw this. And for the other guys, you just draw, draw, the, uh, draw a line, straight line, call it a vertical line. Okay, right here, sorry. So this is the idea to construct the degree zero element because somehow degree zero element means there's no clockwise cups and caps, right? So, so yeah, but the, the pair of uh, this down and up just give you counterclockwise, right? So, so you, you make sure you can only draw a count, either a straight line or like a counterclockwise uh, cups uh, circles, right? So this is the idea to construct this degree zero element. And then we denote the corresponding uh, cup part, I mean the corresponding cup diagram uh, by this uh, lambda and underlying cup. And the, the corresponding cap diagram is like lambda uh, and with this cap. So yeah, and then somehow this looks like first we draw a cup at the bottom and then we draw this uh, orientation, uh, like this down and uh, up. So this is our lambda and this lambda uh, uh, cup and then we draw this cap. So this looks like gluing along this weight, okay? Yeah, so this we, uh, we, we will use, so yeah, this, this uh, presentation uh, in the definition uh, as follows. So yeah, any arc, di any arc diagram of weight lambda can be viewed as a gluing of some like a cup diagram and, and cap diagram for some unique alpha beta because like for any weight, uh, for any arc diagram, you can, always view the cup, you can somehow you can try to, um, for any cup diagrams, uh, you can make this uh, any cup diagram uh, to be degree zero by adding the weight, right? Like if you have uh, like cups, then you always make this to be a uh, counterclockwise, right? If you have uh, like this straight line, then depend, depending, on, depending on the number of M and N, you, so you can give like either up and down, right? So this idea to, like to why so it's like unique alpha and beta, okay? So now, okay, let's, uh, it's, it's a time to give the definition. So, yes. Um, yeah, so th this, this, uh, this was defined in, uh, in the series paper by Brandon and Stopper. Uh, so I think there are like five, three or four papers about to discuss this extended column of algebra. So yeah, what's this? So I first fix a field K and then the uh, extended column of algebra has a K linear basis uh, given by the, all the arc diagrams of type MN. So, and then we should give the, def, uh, give the multiplication. <clears throat> so the multiplication is defined as follows. So like if I have two uh, arc diagrams, so I use the, the presentation uh, as I mentioned in the, in the remark. So, because any arc diagram can be uh, written in this way, uh, in this form. So now if I have these two arc diagrams and then the multiplication will be zero if, if this beta not equal to gamma, okay? And then, yeah, if for the second case, if this beta equals gamma, gamma then we have to do some surgery, namely, first we put this 
arc diagrams at the bottom, and then uh, put this arc diagram uh, to the above this this one. So and then uh, because beta, uh, yeah, this the beta um, cap and this the beta cap. So so if we only look at these two parts, then we only we can only meet either yeah we have this situation or we have this uh, line uh, and line. So for this, if we have a line and line, then we just connect them. But if we have this uh, cup and cap, then the basic idea is like, we just replace this by the two straight lines. But we have to uh, give, the, like, a low, uh, give the rule to define the orientation, right? Like, like yeah, we, we have to de de decide the, the orientation of these arcs. So the, the orientation is, is given by the, yeah, this, this rules. So to explain this rule, let me uh, give you some like, um, notation. like I denote the counterclockwise closed arcs by one. So yeah, it not, not necessarily to be just a circle and it goes also just, yeah, look at the closed uh, like connected component uh, of, of, of the arc diagrams. And the epsilon to be the uh, clockwise, uh, closed arcs, okay? And then uh, this data to be the open arcs, like one connected, connected component part, okay? So, yeah, and then we, uh, we, we use this rule to, to give the, the orientation. So, yeah, uh, so I think uh, here, the best way to understand the rule is looking at examples. So let me give you several examples to, to understand this rule, okay? So, yeah, let me look at this example. So I have a, uh, two arc diagrams uh, of uh, type um, uh, one, m equals one, so n equals two. So it's type one, two. And yeah, and then we put uh, one, put the first one at the bottom and put the second one, the second uh, factor of the multiplication to be uh, on, on the top. And then, as I said, um, yeah, for the straight line, we just connect them, just, Join line and then the orientation should be the same. So here maybe I, I should give a remark to say, uh, yeah, because because of the second constraint in the uh, in the arc diagram, uh, we can we can prove um, for any like uh, so if we have a if we have a, like uh, lines in the same position, then you will prove the orientation should be always like uh, should be the same. So this is like a very easy uh, exercise. So like here we have an up, then this one must be up because of the second constraint uh, in the arc diagrams. Okay, so then we just uh, connect them. And then for, for here, locally we have this, right? So this, then we have to decide. So the idea is like, we just make this to be a straight line. Okay, so by, by here, right? So once we meet this uh, cup and the cap, then we just cut this and then we get a straight line, okay? So like here, we just get this. So then we get this one. But the problem is like, how can we give it the orientation right here? So why we get the zeta here? Because, uh, I mean, why we get this orientation? Because uh, this one is one, right? This is the close, uh, this is the counterclockwise uh, uh, closed arc here, right? Then this denoted by one. And this the uh, just open arc, right? Because this can be go infinity, right? So, so then we have this like situation one tens the zeta, right? We have a y and a tens the zeta. Then we use this formula. Uh, so this rule got, tells us we should use the orientation in zeta. So here, okay. So yeah, this means we we should use orientation here. That's why we get this orientation. So yeah, so for this multiplication, we we just use this rule, okay. And yeah, let's look at this one. So for here, we just connect them. And yeah, for here, we just cut and we get this one. And, but here, let's look at the situation. So here we have like a, a clockwise closed arc. So this is the epsilon. And here we have an open arc. And then by this rule here, you know, once we have this one, we always get a zero. So this means if you have this, this, so this epsilon and this zeta, right? So then, we just, the multiplication of these two guys are, are zero, okay? So th there's no uh, contribution, okay? 
yeah, just this is zero means means okay. And yes, let, let's look at one more example here. Um, so I, I, I compute the multiplication of these arcs uh, with these arcs. Okay, so then first we, we connect the straight line here. So we get the, then we get the, just the one closed uh, arc diagram, right? So this is the one closed arc, which is the uh, uh, counterclockwise. So, so then this is the one, right? The whole, the whole um, uh, diagram is one, you know, by one because it's closed and it's, con it's uh, uh, counterclockwise. And then by the rule here, so, so once we do surgery in, in this situation, right? Then we should use this rule. So because this, we have a one, we have, we have this, uh, yeah, counterclockwise uh, closed arcs here. And then we should use this rule to get uh, one tensor epsilon and epsilon tensor one. So what this means, so, so first we cut here, then we get the, we get the two circles, right? But this rule tells us we should copy this, 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 this guys, and we copy this, and then we we orient oriented them like uh, uh, differently. Like so, first one we get one, one means we we have a counterclockwise, and epsilon means clockwise. So this is the one tenth epsilon, and the other one should be other way around. So it should be epsilon tenth one. So so then we should have like uh, clockwise and uh, counterclockwise. So, so for the multiplication of these two, these uh, types, we get two terms, okay? Okay, so this is the, the rule of, of this. Uh, yeah, let me, uh, let's also look at the example about this rule. So, so this means if I have two open arcs, like here, and first we just connect them, and the, the street lines, and then we get the two uh, open arcs. And the rule for this, we have two uh, cases. So, so for the first case, why we get uh, uh, this guy? Because like uh, for the one arc, and there, there, there must be like two uh, infinity, uh, like two uh, parts, right? And, and the, the parts uh, for, for this one, we have like down, both are down. And for the other guys, the two parts, like uh, infinity parts are, are just are oriented by up, right? Both ups. And in this case, then we, we, we get this uh, uh, theta tensor theta. So this means we cut here and then we get, should use the, uh, the, the, the original uh, uh, orientation, like namely here we, we have this down and here we have used down and here we use up then, yeah, then we get up. So this, uh, this gives this term. But uh, yeah, let's look at the example for, for this, uh, when we get zero. So here we also have this uh, similar picture, but if you look at here, this infinity lines here, uh, both are up, right? But this also uh, up. So then this should be zero. So this means um, the only, there's only one case which we get like non-zero uh, theta tensor theta, namely is this case like should, the the one arc should have like um, uh, one of the arc should have like uh, up uh, up uh, like a uh, uh, um, uh, orientation and the other should be like a down uh, and the down orientation then maybe you get this uh, theta tensor theta okay and for other cases uh, are zero okay if I have this theta tensor theta case thing. okay. So yeah, I hope you uh, somehow you, you have a, some uh, a feeling about this uh, multiplication. So, uh, but if you look at this uh, definition, somehow it's difficult to believe this the way defined because like if you have a more complicated one, like maybe you have a several place which you can do surgery, then maybe the multiplication should depend on the like the, the order, right? Which uh, like depending on the order of the surgeries, right? So somehow it's difficult to like, to to see uh, this uh, well-defined uh, multiplication. Like, or also it's difficult to see why uh, to see the social, right? So somehow, yeah. In order to do this, to so maybe we have to use other definitions. So like uh, this 
So actually, KMN can be defined as like a quotient algebra of some uh, classical, so-called classical Kolmanov arc algebra. So which was introduced by Kolmanov, uh, yeah, uh, uh, induced from the uh, two-dimensional topological quantum field theory associated to uh, this uh, symmetric uh, community with symmetric algebra. Right? Uh, I mean, symmetric Frobenius algebra. So actually, if you look at this rule, maybe you have already found. So if you like look at only the epsilon part, I mean, if you only look at the closed part, I mean, closed uh, um, uh, arcs, then this rule just the multiplication and the co-multiplication of the of this uh, Frobenius uh, symmetric algebra, right? So so yeah. So somehow this the classical column of arc algebra. Um, just involves the closed arcs. So, so there are no like uh, uh, open arcs. And then, yeah, just use uh, this rule to, to define, uh, to give the, uh, I mean, use the same rule uh, uh, just involving this uh, to define the uh, arc diagrams. And why uh, this uh, were defined? And then for this, then we have to, uh, so, so somehow, uh, we have to go back to the TQFT and somehow the TQF, the, the axiom of the TQFT can make sure uh, like uh, this, the, this uh, rule is well defined. And in particular, like um, uh, this algebra is associative and um, uh, yeah, and, and the surgery does not depend on like, uh, depend, the, depend on the, 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 the order, right? okay? Okay, so I think this, uh, yeah, this is the definition for, for KMN. Um, yeah, any questions? There are no questions in the chat, so. Okay, good. So yeah, let me then see some, some like uh, motivation to, to this algebra. So like why this algebra is interesting. Um, so I, I want to at least, um, the following theorems to tell you like well, how interesting it is. Uh, but the quick answer is like, um, yeah, the quick answer should be um, because the algebra uh, KML had, had many uh, algebraic properties and it also appear, uh, it appears in many subjects, for instance, like in uh, uh, geometric representation theory and also like uh, sympolitical geometry and also, um, yeah, from the region like uh, topological quantum field theory or like a low dimensional uh, topology. So yes, so uh, more precisely the following theorem. So, so I think that like for, for this algebra uh, has, has really nice properties for, yeah, like it's a uh, cellular. So the mean the basis has like a, a nice structures and uh, it's also quasi hereditary and, uh, and the Kuzu. So yeah. And in particular, it should be homologically smooth. And but but this algebra, the common of arc algebra, is always like symmetric for opinions. So it's infinite global dimensional. But this one is a finite global dimensional. So I mean, the, then yeah, in some sense, uh, in some maybe it's 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 nicer right? for 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 some yeah for some problems. I mean, and and, and this algebra has a, uh, like a. Uh, Actually, this uh, this KMA is a quasi hereditary cover of the uh, of the corresponding uh, uh, classical coven of algebra. So yeah, namely it has like double centralized property. So this means we, if you look at, you, you can pick some uh, uh, idempotence, namely the just the sum of the uh, arc diagrams of degree zero. Um, this e. And then uh, we look at the endomorphism of these projectiles, then we get uh, over this uh, extent, uh, the classical common of algebra, then we get itself. So here, it is just uh, the local algebra, the corner algebra along this uh, idempotence, okay? And yeah, and this, uh, I, I think the original motivation to this algebra is, is the following uh, theorem by Stropper. So, uh, actually, this algebra describes the principal block of, of the parabolic category O associated to this uh, uh, parabolic uh, subalgebra in GLM plus N. Okay, so this is the two block um, um, uh, parabolic subalgebra. 
And then, uh, yeah, this is also equivalent to the abelian category of pairwise shifts on, on the glass manions, okay? And later, uh, yeah, very recently, uh, this algebra also appears in, uh, in Fukaya, uh, Fukaya category in symbolic geometry. So this is uh, like a Fukaya cyto category associated to uh, some singularities. And, and here, so for this side, then we have to use the grid, gridded algebra. We use this as gridded uh, uh, algebra. Or, or like DG algebra with trivial differential. And the gradient is given by, uh, by the degree uh, uh, which I defined uh, before, okay? And it's the perfect derived category, just uh, yeah, uh, perfect derived category of this DG algebra with trivial differential. And, 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 and here, so um, yeah, this is the infinity category and then we look at the, the, twi the twisted complexes, okay? The derived category. It's just the category of twisted complexes. And, and here I, I would like to give a, a remark uh, about this, this result. So somehow this result uh, relies on a formality result of, uh, of KMN. So what, what do I mean by this? So actually, uh, as I said, this A infinity algebra and uh, they construct a, a define a generator in this, in this um, category. And whose endomorphism uh, a priori is infinity algebra, but uh, the underlying uh, gridded algebra is just uh, this KMN. So then, um, for this result, then we have to prove the higher structure can be, I mean, can be gauged to uh, uh, zero. So we, you can you can kill this higher product. Uh, so this means we we have to prove the 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 endomorphism of this this generator should be formal. Okay. So this is the formality result. And actually earlier, uh, I mean, earlier than this result, uh, there was like a stronger uh, expect expectation, uh, I mean, from namely this, the following conjecture by uh, Stropper in, in her ICM uh, report uh, in 2012. So uh, she conjecture uh, actually the Hochschild cohomology, uh, certain like uh, bike related Hochschild cohomology should be vanished. And actually this result, we are, uh, this conjecture we imply uh, like a more stronger uh, formality result about KMN, namely the intrinsically formal, uh, formal formality of this KMN, okay? So yeah, so I, I will go back to this uh, conjecture in my last part and somehow this is the, uh, our main motivation to, to this talk, okay? Uh, but to do this, uh, so, I mean, if we only look at this diagram algebra, uh, it seems difficult to compute the Hochschild cohomology. So um, we, we have to like, uh, yeah, we want to first realize this algebra as a quiver with relations. And then we can use, uh, use our like uh, combinatorial method to, to compute the Hochschild cohomology, okay? So, so the first uh, task is, uh, is to realize, uh, to describe the quiver with relations of this algebra, okay? So this is uh, the topic uh, of my second uh, part. So this is our goal. So we want to describe this uh, KMA as some uh, quiver uh, with relations. So, okay. So, so as I said, this algebra is very nice. For instance, it's Kuzu. So then in particular, this algebra is, uh, is quadratic. So then this means you can write uh, KMA is like a, a tensor algebra uh, quotient by uh, quadratic relations, right? So then uh, in order to find this Q, we know somehow we only, from this Kuzunis, we know the vertices of the quiver should be uh, all the degree zero arc diagrams. So this uh, just uh, should be our uh, vertices. And the arrows uh, should be correspond to the degree one arc diagrams, right? And so somehow, uh, yeah, but the degree zero uh, arc diagrams uh, is one to one close, uh, one to one correspondence to the, um, uh, to the weights, right? Because as I said uh, in, the, in the remark, uh, so for any weight, there is like unique uh, arc diagrams, right? So, so yeah, so, so the vertices, now we know the vertices uh, just uh, by weights. So, so then this means the number of vertices is just, m plus n choose n, okay? So this is the number of vertices. And now we have to also look at the arrows. 
And the arrows uh, also can be read off from the, just from weight without uh, writing, uh, writing down the, 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 arc, the arc diagrams, okay? And yeah, I, I, will, I will give this, uh, yeah, I will explain this uh, later in example to, to see how to find these arrows. But uh, yeah, first, before this, let me just, uh, yeah, try to give uh, some result, uh, a result about uh, the description of this Q and I. So this uh, QMA is just a, is a double quiver of uh, some bipartite uh, graph. By this, I mean, you can set, you can divide the vertices into two parts, two subsets, and the edges can only go from one to the other, okay? So there's no edges between uh, there, the one, uh, each of them, okay? And the, the relations, uh, we have only these three relations. So first one is like a monominal relations. So there's the certain monominal relations. And also there's like a commutative uh, square relations. So, so once you have a squared, then it should be equal. I mean, if, uh, yeah, if you have like uh, any length two paths, which uh, are not two cycle, then it must be equal, okay? So this uh, this uh, this relation. So somehow this is uh, quite easy, and we also have the relation at each vertex. So yeah, then it has the following form. So like for each vertex, we we can we have some like going up arrows and uh, yeah, and uh, some uh, down uh, going down arrows, and then the the relation should be like for each like uh, y x. You if you go down and go up first, should be a linear combination of some uh, uh, lens two paths of like two cycles, like you go in up and down. So, and with some coefficients and this coefficient can only be like uh, either zero, uh, one or uh, plus or minus two, okay? Yeah, let me give you an example to, uh, to look at this, to how to like find the quiver uh, and relations. So let, let's look at the K11. So as I said, this is a five-dimensional five algebra. And uh, so we have a degree, we have a two degrees because we have a two weights. And uh, then we, we should have a two uh, vertices correspond to the, corresponding to the uh, uh, two degree uh, zero uh, arc diagram, right? This is the degree zero and this is the degree zero. And then uh, how can we find an arrow? Like, so for the arrow, we just like uh, open, uh, so, we just e switch um, uh, the, the, the up down in some circles. Like here, we, then we have only one arrow because we can only do, so it's only one circle here. So then we, we, we have arrow here and, and, and this is the graph and then we do the double quiver. So then we add two, like, uh, two arrows uh, with uh, opposite direction and this correspond to these arcs. Okay, so then, uh, yeah, we can also compute the, the relations also can be read off yeah, from this formula, uh, just by looking at the, um, the weights uh, without writing uh, uh, join uh, arc diagrams, okay? But the, yeah, to explain this to, uh, um, it's uh, quite, yeah, we need more time to explain this, like how, how to get this, uh, how to get the uh, precise of i, okay? Uh, let's skip this uh, for this talk. And but let, 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 let me give you one more example about this. Uh, uh, yeah, for K22. So here, uh, as I said, we have like six, uh, we have six uh, uh, weights, right? Because this, uh, we have like a four choose two. So then we have a four uh, uh, vertices and how to get the arrows. So as I said, the arrows should correspond to circles in the, in the, in the degree zero arc diagram. For instance, here, so if we open this, uh, if we switch the, the, uh, the, the up down orientation to them, we should get the one arrow. Like for instance, if we, we can make switch this, then we get like a uh, down, up, down, up. Then we go to here, right? So this is the, like a down, up, down, up, right? But we can also switch the, the orientation in this circle, the big circle, then we should get this arrow here, because if we switch these two guys, then we get like uh, up, down, up, down, okay? So we get arrow here. Then anyway, we do the double quiver. So we should get this. Like, like for instance, there's only one arrow go up because there's only one uh, circle, 
okay? So somehow the number of arrows, uh, I mean, in the graph, uh, it's equal to the number of circles in the, in the uh, degree zero arc diagrams, okay? So like here we have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So then we have, should have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, edges in the graph. And then we do the double quiver, okay? And yeah, and the, 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 the relations, but yeah, let's skip this because, uh, yeah, I mean, there's they, still like, uh, you can, uh, it's possible to describe these relations just uh, looking at uh, the weights and do some combinatorics. I mean, you don't need to uh, draw this, uh, um, you know, draw this uh, arc diagrams and then do the multiplication using this rule. So you don't need to do that. Um, you just look at the, this, uh, this weights and then, uh, yeah, and then you can read, read off these multiplications. Okay, it's just the relations in the, the quadratic relations in the ideal. Okay, so yeah, once we believe this, then uh, we can use this quiver with relations to study uh, the, uh, the infinity deformations. Or like you can, uh, yeah, once you can write down the quiver with relations, then you can read, uh, I think you can read more uh, representation uh, information, right, from the quiver, okay? So from our uh, perspective uh, or our aim, so uh, uh, we want to use this uh, to study uh, the infinite deformation or uh, computing the Hochschild cohomology. Some, somehow this is our uh, starting point to, uh, to write down the quiver with relations, okay? So yeah, let me give you uh, the definition of infinity deformation. So so for us, somehow this deform infinite deformation should be like strict. Uh, yeah, because um, uh, I just change the higher product. Uh, yeah, I don't allow, like uh, in this definition, we don't allow to like uh, change the multiplication or like uh, add the differential, okay? So in some sense, it should be like, uh, 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 some people also call this uh, infinity extensions because we just add the higher structures uh, so that this, yeah. Uh, whose uh, underlying uh, multiplication should be the allegiant one, okay? And how, yeah, like in general people, then should, we should ask like how many deformations we have like for uh, some given uh, graded algebra, right? And then the following theorem tell me, tells, tells us like uh, some information like uh, or criteria. So so if like the Hochschild cohomology of some, yeah, uh, some Hochschild cohomology vanish, then, uh, the graded algebra has no any like, uh, trivial, um, uh, has no any non-trivial infinite deformation, namely this the intrinsically formal. So, so yeah, if, if your algebra satisfying this condition, then uh, yeah, any like uh, infinity extension should be infinite isomorphic to the underlying uh, graded algebra, okay? So this is a uh, very useful uh, criteria to know, uh, to, yeah, to check, uh, whether we have like uh, any uh, non-trivial infinite deformations. Okay, and then if you look at it, go back to the conjecture, uh, yeah, which is our uh, motivation. So uh, this conjecture says uh, uh, the cohomology, uh, uh, yeah, is zero even for like i big, bigger than zero. Here is, we only need like i bigger than two, right? So then in particular, this means uh, uh, this KMN uh, should be intrinsically formal, right? So yeah, this is uh, really useful, right? If we can, uh, for some, yeah, for some, for some people, this is uh, good news, right? Because any higher structures is 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 just uh, infinite isomorphic to the to the original one. But on other side, this uh, I mean, this so, uh, yeah, this also even this I mean, sometimes I mean this the uh, um, yeah, uh, if there is infinite deformation, right? I, I mean, if there's non-trivial deformations, I mean, then it's also interesting, right? You can then you can study like uh, uh, the meaning, right, of the deformations, right? So, okay, to um, yeah, to uh, try to um, look at to to uh, study this to compute this. Um, 
So somehow we should, because this algebra is causal, so uh, we want to um, look at, uh, we should go to the causal dual side uh, based on the following theorem by Keller. So, so the theorem says like if, if A is a causal algebra, then uh, there is isomorphism between the bi-graded Hochschul cohomology of A and, and the causal dual. So, and this isomorphism should be com compared with higher structures. Okay, so yeah, what, 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 what do we mean by this? So like for, for this side, um, so the, the, the non-trivial co-cycle should, uh, is like this. So like if we took, take two, so this is what we are interested in, right? And then, uh, yeah, for this side, this one should understand in the, in the following way. So yeah, the co-cycle should be from A tends I to A of degree two minus I. So this degree is given by the path length. I mean, if uh, our A can be written as KQ mod I, right? And, and for this side, um, the co-cycle should be just from uh, A, A chic tends A chic to A chic. So this is also a degree two minus I, but yeah, also by path length. Because uh, why we have this, uh, so it, it seems this, uh, yeah, this uh, confusing, right? But, but actually here we use the graded algebra. We, we are this as a bi-grading. So this bi-grading is given by one minus one for arrows. And, and the arrow here, uh, should we, we should put this in degree zero and one, okay? So then, uh, so some of the bi-grading should have a different meaning for both sides. But, but the, yeah, uh, why we, have, we need this then, yeah, somehow this is our motivation. We somehow, we want to this part correspond to a infinite deformation. And this part correspond to uh, associative deformation. So, so like if, for instance, if you look at this part, uh, yeah, this, if you, you are familiar with infinity algebra, then this like uh, should be a part of the data, right? In the, uh, I mean, should be a, a, a structure, right? In uh, morphism in the, in the, uh, in, the uh, in the infinity algebra, right? Like it should be like MI, right? So the mi should is like this degree, like two minus i. So somehow the uh, if the, the class uh, in in this cohomology uh, correspond to the first order a infinity deformation of a, right? Because if you pick uh, a non-trivial co-cycle here, then this means we, we should have a, a map uh, which is compatible with the multiplication. So then this means should be yeah this should give us like uh, infinitesimal a infinite uh, inf uh, infinitesimal uh, infinite deformation of A. And for this side, if we look at here, yeah, then if we pick a non trivial co cycle here, then this just give us a associative deformation because we just changed the multiplication, right? And, uh, and the degree just means we, we send, send like a, a, some paths to longer paths, right? Because if I, I assume this like bigger than zero, then this means like if we, you look at the multiplication of two arrows, then it might go to like a, a, like a pass of length bigger than uh, two, okay? So this should be fitted by, by this pass length, okay? So, so then the Keller theorem uh, tells us uh, the first order in, infinite deformation should be one-to-one -one correspondence to the first order filtered associative deformation of uh, a chic, right? Yeah, uh, after, yeah, this D mark. Okay, and actually we can somehow, yeah, um, uh, lift this to, to the uh, actual deformation. So namely, like if we start with the um, Kuzu algebra and you, you look at some, uh, uh, look at an actual uh, field deformation of the Kuzu dual, then uh, we can just look, compute in the minimal model of this defo associative deformation. So, this should be somehow as graded space should be isomorphic to A, but actually this uh, infinite, uh, the multiplication is also compatible. So then this means this A infinite deformation, okay? So somehow this proposition should be um, uh, as like um, deformation theoretic uh, uh, interpretation for, for this theorem, but uh, uh, yeah, we don't know how to like uh, uh, argue this uh, directly. So, so somehow our proof uh, uh, relies on uh, uh, this called uh, the homological perturbation lemma. So you have you can compute this by hand to to get yeah to check the uh, multiplication here is is it uh, coincide with the multiplication on A. 
Okay, I, I think you can use uh, just use spatial sequence to see uh, as grid space they are isomorphic. But I don't know like how to argue the uh, on the like the unit of product here uh, coincide with the original multiplication on A. Okay, so for this uh, we need this uh, homological perturbation lemma. Okay, and based on this preparation, then we can somehow state uh, our theorem. So yes, so the theorem is uh, yeah it's here. So um, yeah, we compute some uh, for some degree uh, for some i. Uh, we we computed the hh. Uh, uh, yeah, it's just the one dimensional. So yeah, here is for i two m m minus uh, four. And yeah, the idea is follows. So it's following. So uh, so first we we use Keller's result. So yeah, to compute this. Then we just need to compute the cause dual, right? The, the isomorphism. And then, yeah, we need to, so somehow here correspond, just correspond to associative algebra. So, so somehow you can view this as a, a ungraded algebra. So, just, namely, it's concentrated in degree zero. And then you just uh, compute the usual Hochschild co merge in degree two. And then, but for this, uh, I mean, it's still difficult, right? If you only use the Hochschild coaching complex, but the, yeah. But uh, we have like this combinatorial uh, method. So for this, we need this uh, so-called reduction system. So first, we, we find like a nice basis for this algebra. So namely, we, we, we should have like this non-commutative global basis. So this is just, uh, uh, yeah, the reduction system means we, we, we can split the idea into two parts, like the leading term and the, 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 the remaining terms. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, of course we can split like uh, uh, arbitrarily, but but it should satisfy like the, the so-called diamond condition. So namely, this this set S should the leading time should should be well should be nice. So namely, uh, the associated monomial algebra uh, of this S should be uh, should have the same size as as, as KMN. Okay, and for the, to to check this diamond condition, uh, somehow we need uh, yeah do some computation. So so first we should check the associate inducible paths should be uh, yeah should be the uh, should 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 form a basis okay so for this we we need to compute the dimension of this and uh, then yeah this we, we need to do some combinatorics and then we get uh, some formula and and here this is just the custom logistic polynomial uh, for Galassmannians. And then by uh, Brandon's job result, we know this uh, exactly the dimension of the algebra uh, associated uh, yeah, along from this, uh, this uh, vertex to this vertex, okay? And by irreducible pass, I mean uh, any pass, uh, a pass uh, which does not contain a sub pass uh, which belongs to SMN, okay? So, so irreducible pass means it's not a, like divisor of, of uh, paths in SMN, okay? And then based on this, so we know uh, by our uh, previous paper, we know uh, the Hochschild co merge of in degree two uh, has a like combinatorial meaning. So namely, we, we it's correspond to the first order deformation of the of the reduction system or like the, the global basis. So, and, and for here, the space is much smaller. For instance, uh, there are only like 11, uh, uh, dimensional uh, 11 uh, first order deformations. And then we have to uh, compute the, like, the gauge equivalence and it's 10 dimensional. So like that only one dimensional uh, may survived, okay? So by, by deformation, I mean, uh, we add some like infinite uh, decimal, uh, some uh, first order terms. And so that the, this uh, reduction system still satisfies the diamond condition, okay? But to check this, we just need to check some, uh, to, to just to, to just um, resolve uh, the overlaps. Okay, so we, we need to do some combinatorics uh, to 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 check the gauge equivalence. I mean, it's easy to say it's eleven dimensional, but here the difficulty, the, the technical part is like to compute the gauge uh, actions. So we need to get ten dimensional somehow. Uh, yeah, the non-trivial. Uh, uh, right. The, the, the only one non-trivial uh, deformations, okay? And as a corollary, uh, so this, uh, um, yeah, this means uh, we get 
we can we can also yeah from here we can also get uh, an explicit a infinite deformation because uh, here actually we can evaluate this t to be one. So a priori, I mean for for the proof we we only need the first order term. So namely we can make t square to be zero. But actually uh, you can evaluate. So I mean this can be uh, uh, can can extend to a um, an uh, a real deformation, actual deformation. So namely we can take this to be one. And then this still like a uh, uh, global, uh, it's a still reduction system satisfying diamond condition. But the algebra now uh, changed, right? Because we add some uh, terms. So the relation are changed. So um, then we get a new algebra, which is the deformation of the causal duo, okay? So then we can look at the extensions, the minimal model of this, the, this deformation of the causal duo. So then by the proposition before, so we know the minimum model of the of the deformation here uh, should give us the infinite deformation of KMN. So in this way, we, we indeed get like, a, yeah, an explicit infinite deformation. So yeah, because uh, this this the deformation is given by this two uh, MN minus four, right, degree. So this means that for the lower degrees, it, uh, the high product is zero. I mean, sorry, should be, uh, bigger than two, okay? And uh, yeah, and the only non-trivial, uh, the first uh, non-trivial product uh, is here, okay? So yeah, uh, the last remark. So yeah, uh, from here, because uh, based on the result by Mark Smith, we know uh, actually this one also gives a infinite deformation of the Fukaya Seidel category, and also uh, gives deformations of the glass manias, right? But yeah, for this moment, we don't know how to like uh, give the symplectic uh, interpretation for, for these deformations, even though we know like uh, there should be like very interesting, uh, yeah, should, should be uh, exist a very interesting interpretation. Yeah, so yeah, thank you for your attention.